I still can't believe that Alistair ordered Crane PR to put out the story that Chad and Whitney are half brother and sister. And that they committed incest before they knew it. Yeah. Well, you know him. He did it to stick it to my father and Whitney's mom. He, he doesn't care who gets hurt. Well, Whitney's the one who got hurt to the core. Chad, too, you know. Still, you know, I just... I really hope Whitney can get past her pain before much longer, you know? It's, it's not like she has a future with Chad, right? I mean, he's her half-brother, for God's sake. Well, just don't push Whitney to get over Chad before she's ready. She still blames the Cranes for what's happened to her. I know, I know, and I'm a Crane. I got it. And if you come on too strong too soon, Whitney will push you away. What is wrong, Whitney? I've never seen you like this. Please. Chad, please stay away from me. Why? Why do you think? I mean, really. Look, we can't be half brother and sister and be in love with each other. If you come near me, bad things are going to happen. But I can't comfort you when you're upset. <laughs> Chad, you kissed me just now. On the forehead. Yeah. Come on. We both know what we do to each other. You know? How just being close makes us want to, um... I can't say it. <laughs> I can't say it. I can't even think it. Please. I'm begging you to just stay away from me. Please. Paloma. Mi niña preciosa. Having you back in my arms. It's a dream come true. Gracias, Santa Madre. Gracias de todo corazón. Luis and I are so happy for you both. I told you Paloma wanted to come home. Ay, mija, I've lived for this moment. No mother has ever needed a daughter more than I need you right now. Trust me, the only reason your brother Luis went down to Mexico to fetch you home was a selfish one. He wanted to cheer up your sick mother. He doesn't give a damn about you. It's a dream come true for me. The girl hasn't a clue. I'm the one who used her as bait to try to kill Sheridan and Luis, her father and my wife. Idiot Lopez Fitzgeralds. They're just like all the rest of the great unwashed. They'll believe whatever you tell them. If Paloma's stupidity is any indication, Perhaps the threat represented by Catherine and Martin to me and my empire isn't as imminent as I thought. Perhaps there's time to target them before they target me. I know Alistair's somewhere in this house. I won't stop until I find him and I kill him. I won't let you down, Catherine. Mother, is that you? Julian, oh, I can't let him know who I am yet. I've got to get out of here. Mother, how, how can you be here? My God, you're dead. You, you'll forgive me if I've, I've, I've frightened you. I, I, for a moment, rapture overtook reason. I th thought that you were my, my mother, come back to life, come back. But that's I. That's impossible. She's been dead for years. And as I look at your face, lovely as it is, it, it looks nothing like my mother. I hope you'll forgive me. 
I said, I... I hope you'll forgive me if I've upset you. Are you all right? No. I'm fine. There's nothing to forgive. Would you repeat that? Why? W would you repeat what you just said? There's nothing to forgive. My God, my, my mother's voice, I, I remember sounding exactly like that. It's... God, you must think me mad. Comparing you to my, my late mother, it's just that there's so many things about you that remind me of her, the tilt of your head, the way you carry yourself, your, your eyes, you have my mother's eyes. Now, forgive me for staring. I'm, I, I just, it's just, I, I'm, I'm Julian Crane, and this is Dr. Eve Russell. Oh, how do you do? Hi, how do you do? I, I'm Mrs. Wheeler. Um, I am Paloma Lopez Fitzgerald's friend, and my husband and I, we like to think that we're like Paloma's godparents. We just accompanied Paloma with Luis and your sister Sheridan back from Mexico to the States. Uh, Sheridan said it was okay if I looked around the house and the grounds. Is that all right? Oh, yes, of course. I... In fact, you know Pilar and uh, Teresa. Uh, Pilar's other daughter are staying at the mansion now. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of a long story. It's best left to be told later. But may I show you around? Oh, thank you. I, I would like that. Okay. Is your husband... Uh... Is he coming up to the mansion? Um, well, he was here with me, but he must be wandering around somewhere on his own. I... Oh. May we? Yes, thank you. Catherine, I should have killed you the first time you denied me your bed. But I didn't. I kept hoping you'd come to love me like your sister Rachel loved me. But you didn't. You never even came close. If only Rachel hadn't died in that boating accident, I would have married her instead of you, her second-rate sister. Damn you for not dying instead of Rachel. Damn you for rejecting me and then betraying me with Martin Fitzgerald. Rachel would have been true to me. Rachel loved me. And I loved her. Soon, you'll join your sainted sister. I'll get rid of you and all the others who have conspired to make my life miserable. Paloma! <laughs> I'm so glad you were finally home, sweetheart. Palomita? ¿Qué te pasa, mija? You seem uncomfortable being here. What's up, sis? Come on, you're here. You're back with your family where you wanted to be. Oh, why are you so tense? I, I'm, I'm just tired after the flight. All right. I'll go finish unpacking so I can lie down and rest. What are you up to? What am I up to? What makes you think I'm up to anything? I know that look. It's how I look when I'm planning something. Ah, you mean when you're plotting and scheming something? Oh, so you admit it. Okay, first of all, I'm not admitting anything. Secondly, Teresa, not everyone thinks the way that you do. Oh, really? Really. For instance, for instance, most people, in their right mind anyway, wouldn't even think to uh, chloroform Gwen and Ethan's surrogate, lock her in a closet, and then get implanted with Gwen and Ethan's fertilized embryo. But you did. Well, most people don't have Gwen and Ethan adopting their son and refusing to give him back without an incentive. That's true. That's true. Listen, I, why did you sleep with another guy after the implant, anyway? I said I betrayed you with another man while we were dating. 
I never said I had sex with anyone. You want to be a lawyer? Oh, stop trying to change the subject. We're talking about you, not about me. Mm-hmm. Yes. So? What were you thinking about before? Before? Oh, yes, I was thinking that you should get some rest because this whole 20 questions thing that you're playing with me, it's, it's exhausting you. Fox. You know what I'm saying? You are not going to see Whitney. Fox. No, adios. I'll catch you later then. Fox. Bye. Uh, you are just asking for trouble if you're going to see Whitney. Okay. Okay, I'll keep my distance. But we have to talk about this. Try to make some kind of peace with each other. Not now, Chad, okay? But we can't go on like this. Chad, just leave. Go. Just leave me alone, all right? Please, Holy Mother, tell me what to do. Thanks to Alistair Crane, the whole world knows that I've been sleeping with my brother. And once I have Chad's baby, they're gonna know that it's a child of incest. I can't have an abortion. I just can't. But once my secret's out, I can't protect my baby either. My son or daughter is gonna be taunted and ridiculed, treated like some freak. I choose life for my baby, but now what do I do so that its life isn't a living hell? Please, Holy Mother, help me. Help me help my baby not to suffer. Please. Don't worry about Paloma, okay? I'm sure she's just overwhelmed by her trip home and seeing you and uh, just thinking about how her life is going to change by being here in the United States, you know? And Paloma has a lot to deal with on top of everything else that she's been through. I mean, yeah. being kidnapped, being held hostage, almost dying in Sheridan. the jungle. Me, Luis? <laughs> it's okay, mijo. Sheridan told me how you all nearly died in Mexico because of Alistair. You know, she's probably still reeling from her ordeal. That and she told us, you know, how tired she was after such a long flight. We, we just need to give her time to get her bearings again, you yeah. know, rest. You're right, you're right. It's selfish of me to make my daughter's homecoming about me. I have to think about what's best for my daughter. Aww. You know, after she takes a nap, I am going to make her her favorite meal. My sister Maria told me what she likes. Uh, hold on, okay, now, I just don't think you're up to all that, okay? Just. Louise, I haven't felt this good in a long time. And having my baby home is the best medicine for me. Uh, I well. think that it is fine if she cooks for Paloma. And if there's any extra for us, <laughs> even better. I'm going to make pollo con mole a la poblana. Great. <laughs> Mi cocina is tu cocina. Thank you, Sheridan. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> yeah. I have never seen your mother this happy. Yeah. I think the only thing that would make her happier is if my father came home. Well, this is harmony where anything seems to be possible. <laughs> but for now, you know, Paloma is home safe and sound, and it's made Paloma very happy. Yeah. <laughs> I just hope Paloma's happy being here with us. Just know that when Luis uses you, he'll toss you aside just as your mother did when you were a small child. I hope you didn't pack too large a bag, because you'll be back on a plane to Mexico so fast it'll make your head spin. I can't believe that. The Wheelers would have warned me. They know me since I was very young. Ah, yes, the Wheelers. Poor girl, they'll lie to you too tell you that it's such a wonderful thing that you've come back to be reunited with your family, but they're not to be trusted any more than the rest of them. Que estupida to let Luis talk me into coming back to Harmony. 
they don't want me. And I hate this place. So you're friends of uh, my sister and Louise. Good. Well, why don't you sit, stay, talk? We'll, we'll just have a chat, and perhaps Mr. Wheeler will wander back in. I really shouldn't, but, but thank you, I will. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Russell is a, uh, a house guest here in the mansion. She's also treating Pilar's blood disorder. Oh, successfully, I hope. Uh, Pilar's still weak, but she appears to be in remission. And I'm sure St. Paloma will do her world of good. Oh, yes. Being close to a child again that you've been separated from for so many years, it's like the answer to a mother's dream. Do you have children, Mrs. Wheeler? I do. I have two children. I have a son and a daughter from whom, unfortunately, I've been estranged for many, many years. How sad for you. How sad for them. Yes, sometimes it's been almost unbearable, especially looking back and looking at the events that led to the current situation. I know what you mean. So, uh, we, do. we both do, yes. I might as well, I'll tell you, because you're going to learn about it sooner or later. Eve is, is not just a house guest here. She's, uh, she's the love of my life, even though I am married to another woman named Rebecca. I see. And Eve and I both have children with other people, but we also have a son together. Only we're estranged from him, like... You are with your children. Oh, I'm sorry. After our son was born, Julian's father, Alistair, had him kidnapped. And then he made the hospital tell Eve that our baby died. Oh, my God, how horrible. And we believed that to be the case until a few years ago when some events led us to realize that our son was, in fact, alive. And so very recently, we found out who he is, and and we revealed ourselves to him. Oh, well, that's wonderful. No, it's not really. It turns out against all odds that our son is someone that we've known for a long time and who is engaged to my oldest daughter. What? And both Chad, our son, and Whitney, Eve's daughter, were both devastated to learn that they were half-brother and sister. Devastated and angry. Now they hate both of us. I am so sorry for all of you. Thank you. I know it's been hell, but we just hope that with time, we'll all be able to get along. Our dearest wish is to be reunited with our children. Mine too. Oh, where are my manners? Would you like a sherry? Yes, thank you. I, I'd love one. Well, good. Even I could use one myself. Well, I'll pour it for us. Uh, Mrs. Wheeler. Yes. The bar is here. Oh. But when my mother was alive, she kept the bar over, over there. How odd. It's not only do you remind me of my mother, but you seem to think like her as well. I wonder why that is. Enjoy your homecoming while you can, Catherine, my dear. Your days are numbered. Cigar smoke. Alistair must be in the library. This won't be like our face off in the jungle. This time, I'll kill him. screwed up before Whitney. Not telling you I was married before, but this. Us being half brother and sister. This is too much. Too damn much. I really gotta start knocking, huh? 
Fox, hey man, I, I'm not angry at you, man. It's just the situation. My life is really screwed up right now. Yeah, uh, Alistair really didn't welcome you into the family with open arms, huh? No, don't get me started on Master Alistair, or I might kill him yet. Right. So, um, you're upset about the situation with Whitney, huh? Yeah, I found her at the church. I tried to talk to her, but she wouldn't have anything to do with me. I... I'm really sorry things turned out the way they did for you, Chad. I, um... I, truly, I, I, don't, I don't know what else to say. Except, um... Welcome to the family. Now you can ruin other people's lives just by being a crane. You know, I found that out firsthand. Both our lives are ruined. Yeah, it's true, but, um, you know, I mean, if you look on the bright side, things could be worse, right? Chad, you could have married her. She could have gotten pregnant by you, her own half-brother. What a mess that would have been, huh? Whitney. What happened? My life. That's what happened. I just saw Chad, and, um, he told me that Alistair ordered Crane PR to contact the tabloids about us. Now the whole world knows that I've been sleeping with my brother. I'm sorry, Wit. Oh, I'm sorry. Fox was just here. He showed me some of the stories. Oh, great. I mean, I can't even believe those rags even printed pictures of the two of us together. Well, I know what I'm gonna have to do. I, I have to join a convent. I have to join a convent to escape the notoriety. I'll just become a nun. Becoming a nun or a priest is to give your life to God. It's not running away from your problems. Well, I have to do something. I have to do something. I'll, I'll, I'll have plastic surgery. I'll have plastic surgery to change my looks. That way, nobody will know who I am. And people call me a drama queen. Wit, your life isn't over, okay? You've just hit a minor pothole on the highway to happiness. I'm sorry, did you just say minor to me? <sighs> I'm sorry. Uh, the point is that people have short memories. Soon, you and Chad will be yesterday's news. You really think so? Trust me. In a month, no one will remember any of this. I mean, it's not like you got pregnant and you have Chad's baby to look at as a constant reminder of the carnal sin that you committed with your brother. I'm so happy to be home with you. <laughs> Despite everything that's happened with my father, I feel like nothing can come between us ever again. That's right. We had our commitment ceremony, and as soon as I possibly can, I'm gonna officially make you my wife. I can't wait to be your wife. Mm. And I can't wait to be the mother of your children, too. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait either. But with Paloma staying in our room, it... Doesn't exactly give us the opportunity to get started on the family, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm sure Paloma wants her own privacy, too, which is why I'm having a room decorated up at the mansion. And once it's ready, she can move right in. We just have to be patient a little while longer. Are you kidding me? Okay, I've been patient all day. And with you this close to me, all I can say is my impatience is growing. <laughs> yeah, I can... Feel your frustration. <laughs> I've got an idea. Mm -hmm. What do you say? We go off alone, somewhere romantic, I mean, just for tonight. We just got home. Well, exactly. You know, and everything is still quiet with Alistair. And besides that, the Wheelers can be here for Paloma, and Paloma can be here for Mama. I don't know. It worries me that my father's still out on the loose. It's going to be fine. It'll be fine. Mama, hey, um, is it okay if Sheridan and I just go off? I mean, just for tonight, for a little oh, romantic. Me. Oh, of course, it'll give Paloma and me an opportunity to spend time together alone, just the two of us. Exactly. All right, I'm gonna go tell Paloma, okay? <laughs> Nobody wants me. I was allowed to come here to be the nursemaid for my sick mother, even though she lives in a mansion full of servants. Hello, Max, Luis. 
Come in. Thank you. Hey. Were you able to get some sleep? Some. Yeah, good. Anyway, I just came by to tell you that Sheridan and I are gonna go out, you know, celebrate our homecoming in private. Oh, good for you. Well, I thought it's perfect. Now, this way you get to have Mama all to yourself. And the wheelers are here, you know, mm. to make sure you're safe. Mm. You've thought of everything, hmm? Yeah. So, uh, come out and say goodbye to Sheridan, okay? Okay. That man I met at the mansion was right. Luis just brought me here to take care of my mother so he could come and go whenever he wants with her dead brother's widow. We don't even have Antonio's death certificate yet, and they are already making plans to get married. Son unos descarados. Damn it, Crane. Turn around! Face death like a man! Damn. I must have missed Alistair by a few minutes. <sighs> Catherine before plastic surgery. Alistair snuffed out his cigar on her picture. <sighs> I bet he plans to snuff Catherine out too. Mrs. Wheeler, why did why did you think the bar was over there? Uh, well, I didn't. Uh, actually, I, I guess I just thought it would look better over there. I mean, the space suits it better. My mother felt the same way. So when she was alive, she had it placed there. But after her death, my father had it moved to its current spot. Why don't I get the sherry's first, and then you two can talk? Oh, thank you. Thank you. I must say, it's, it's uncanny how much you remind me of my mother. I, I was a teenager when she died, but when I... When I look at you, it's... The way you stand, your voice, your eyes, I... You must forgive me, I sound obsessed. Oh, please don't apologize. The truth is, you remind me of my son. I do. I mean, you're older than he was when I last saw him, but the resemblance is there. I suspect we're two souls who miss our loved ones and we're projecting familiar traits on perfect strangers just because we hope to find some comfort. It is nice, though, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's nice. Darling, oh, thank goodness. Oh. I thought I'd lost you forever. Nope, I made it back safe and sound, huh? You must be Mr. Wheeler. Yes, I am. Oh. Darling, this is Julian Crane. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Eve Russell. Hi. It's a pleasure to meet you, oh, and it's nice good. to meet you, too. Thank you. Um, Eve is Pilar's doctor. Oh, I see. Mm. Uh, how's she doing, by the way? Well, as you can imagine, the death of... Her oldest son, Antonio, has adversely impacted her recovery, but I think seeing Paloma will be very beneficial. I'm glad to hear it. <sighs> Is everything okay, Mr. Crane? Quite no. I'm sorry, I did not mean to be staring at your wife. It's just that she reminds me of my, my late mother, Catherine. Uh, I see. Yeah. Well, I guess it's true what they say, that everyone has a twin somewhere. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Uh, sweetheart, I think that maybe we should go on back to the cottage and we'll see how Paloma's doing. Um, mm -hmm. Darling, I, I would really love to stay and visit with Julian and, and Dr. Russell a little longer. But I'll see you out. Of course. Excuse us. Good to meet you. It's been a pleasure meeting both yes. of you. Yes, okay. okay. You want to spend time with your son, but listen. Be careful. Don't give yourself away. I won't, I promise.
you excuse me? I, I'd like to freshen up. The powder room's down the hall under the stairway. Thank you. I don't want to die. But it's worth my life to get rid of Alistair. And Louise, my boy Louise, you won't have to risk going to jail for his murder and mine, Catherine's family can finally be free of that bastard's cruelty. Martin has sacrificed so much for me because of Alistair. I can't let him sacrifice his life as well. I'll take care of Alistair myself. Who knows? I might even enjoy it. Hey, will you keep an eye on her for me? I mean, Whitney's so vulnerable right now. I hate to see her get taken advantage of by some smooth-talking guy who promises to make everything all right if she just hooks up with him. Right now, she needs some time to get back on her feet and, well, to put things with me and our situation in perspective. Yeah, yeah, you know, you're probably right, but, um, Chet, she's not very fond of the cranes right now. Being that I'm a crane, I don't think she's going to want to spend much time with me, yeah, you know? Man, you were Whitney's friend way before the truth hit the fan, and deep down, that hadn't changed. Besides, man, you're my friend. <sighs> my half-brother. Right. So please, do this for me, Fox. You know, take care of Whitney. Look after her. Yeah, okay, you know, I mean, since you asked, I guess I could, um, look after her, make sure no other guys go near her but me, of course. Thank you, man. Thanks a lot. No, Chad, thank you. Can you imagine how awful it would be if Chad had gotten you pregnant? Yeah. <laughs> actually, I can't imagine. I don't think the thought hasn't crossed my mind because actually it has. Ugh, what a horrible mess. You pregnant with your brother's child. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, I got it. Thank you. Sorry. I'm sorry. It's okay. I didn't mean to get you upset. Look, I know it's hard for you to think that you could never be with Chad again, but there's other men in the world, you know? Meaning? What about Fox? What about Fox? Have you forgotten what happened at the Sea Cliff Inn? We found out Fox loves you. And as far as I know, nothing's happened to change that. Well, you know what? Honestly, Teresa, I don't care. Fox is a crane, and I don't trust the cranes anyway. Fox is not your typical crane, and you know it. Besides, he adores you. And he would marry you in a heartbeat if you would have him. You know, I don't even want to think about this right now, OK? Um, I just don't want to think about it, because I'm just, I'm still dealing with this whole fallout with Chad, okay? Okay, okay. Mm. Just remember, Fox would make a fabulous husband, and, and he would probably make a really good father, too. Yeah, yeah, Fox would be a good husband. And father. Don't need much. <laughs> just going for one night. Oh, good. Have a wonderful time, and try to at least get some rest. Mama. <laughs> what? I, do you think your father and I had five children by just tossing and turning in our Oh, no, you know, I can't even hear this. Are you kidding me right now? Mama. <laughs> <laughs> Mama. Hey. We were just leaving, honey. Have a great first night back in Harmony. <laughs> Mama's dying to spend time with you. See. Si. <laughs> All right. All right, have fun. And don't worry about me. I'll be fine now that I have Paloma with me. <laughs> Goodbye, Pilar. Good question. Save some chicken for me. I will. <laughs> All right, Bye. <hey. laughs> <laughs> I love you. That's right. Leave me here to do your dirty work. Ven, mi amor. Te preparé tu plato favorito. Pollo con mole poblano. Gracias, Mama, but I'm not really hungry. Oh, all right, well, it's okay. We can eat later. Bing, let's sit down. And we'll talk. And then later we'll go up to the main house and see Teresa, huh? Mm -hmm. Please, Mija, can you get that? 
I'm tired from being on my feet all day. Great. Now I'm her nurse and her maid. Senor Wheeler, come in. You can finally meet my mother. Mama, este es el señor Wheeler. Señor. Uh, I recognize you from the internet hookup that Paloma arranged for Luis and Sheridan's commitment uh, celebration. We, we were going to speak and then we got to Mama? <laughs> That's right, Your Highness. The price of gasoline does have political implications. Alistair. Oh, yes, yes, of course. We'll talk again soon. Goodbye. Give my regards to your wives. Catherine, I've been waiting for you. Catherine, my dear, it's about time you came back to me, your loving husband. It's so good to finally see you after all these years. Could I really be dishonest with Fox and let him think this is his baby? You sent Fox to look after Whitney? There's some reason I shouldn't trust Fox to be around Whitney. Your mother's always been a strong woman. How do you know that? Your reign of terror ends tonight. NBC Tonight starts with an all-new Fear Factor. And a stunt that will bring these friends closer than ever. <laughs> then an all-new Las Vegas. A murder with a prime suspect you'd never expect. Stay away from this case. And Heather Locklear and Blair Underwood in an all new LAX. Critics rape, it's a first class takeoff. Enjoy the flight. Fear Factor, Las Vegas and LAX, all new NBC Tonight.